In this unit, I have learnt to perform a wide range of gymnastic skills. This also consisted of learning the biomechanics and anatomy of these skills and more importantly, the skill I have chosen to examine about. Areas of anatomy that we have studied in this unit are the skeletal system, anterior and posterior aspect, muscles and joint types that are used when performing certain skills. Biomechanical principles we have studied are momentum, types of motion, projectile motion, formation, and balance and stability. The skill I'll be analysing is the forward somersault. The biomechanical principle I have identified as a strength is formation during the execution phase of my skill. Formation is the production and combination of forces from different parts of the body to work together at the same time. The key aspects involved in this principle are timing, sequence, range, and order. The way I am successfully using the key aspects of this principle during my skill are through the timing of the movement of my legs and hip so that I am able to compress and then exert my force generated to project myself into the air. Another way was the sequence of the knee and hip flexing at the same time allowing me to compress slightly then expand with great force produced from the muscles in the legs and thighs, as well as the trampoline opposing my downwards force when I jumped onto it. The joints that I am focusing on are the knee and hip joint. The knee joint, also known as the tibiofemoral joint, is a synovial hinge joint. The hip joint is a ball and socket synovial joint. The movement and functions of the knee joint are flexion and extension, whereas the hip joint allows for a greater range of movement. The joint allows the femur to circumduct freely through a 360 degree circle. The femur may also rotate its axis about 90 degrees at the hip joint. The articulating muscles in the knee joint are the quadriceps, hamstring, and muscles of the calf. Along the anterior surface, of the thigh are the four muscles that make up the quadriceps femoris group vastus lateralis, vastus medialis, vastus intermedius, and rectus femoris. The hamstring muscle group spread over the posterior surface of the thigh from the pelvis to the tibia of the lower leg. Three muscles make up the hamstring group biceps femoris, semitendinous, and semimbranosus. The hamstrings work together to flex the leg at the knee. In the calf, the gastrocnemius muscle extends from the end of the femur. The gastrocnemius forms the, forms the posterior muscular wall of the knee and acts as a flexor of the knee and a plantar flexor of the foot. Articulating bones in this joint are the femur, tibia, and patella. There are four main groups of muscles that articulate the hip joint. Anterior group, posterior group, the adductor group, and the abductor group. However, I'll only be analyzing the anterior group and the posterior group as they are important to my skill. The anterior group features muscles that flex the thigh at the joint. This consists of the iliopsonotic group of muscles and the quadricep femoris group. The posterior muscle group is made up of muscles that extend the thigh at the hip. These muscles include the gluteus maximus muscle and the hamstrings group. Articulating bones of this joint are the os coxa and the femur. An agonist muscle is a muscle that retracts while another relaxes, and an antagonist muscle is a muscle that opposes the other, the action of another. The anatomical movements which are following me to successfully execute this phase are the flexion of my knee and hip, which in sequence helps generate the force needed to project myself into the air and perform my skill. This is clearly seen in the preparation phase of my skill where both my hip and knee are flexed. The agonist muscles in knee flexion are hamstrings and the antagonist muscles are the quadriceps group of muscles. I could further improve the performance of my skill anatomically within this principle by not producing as much force as I did as it resulted in me in my somersault to be over rotated. Therefore, I could compress less and apply less force on the trampoline so the forces opposing it aren't as great, which is stated in Newton's third law for every action, 
there's an equal and opposite reaction. The biomechanical principle I have identified as a weakness is rotational inertia. During the execution phase of my skill, rotational inertia is the tendency of a rotating object to remain rotating unless a torque is applied to it. The key principle behind rotational inertia is when mass is moved into the axis of rotation, angular velocity increases. When mass is moved away from the axis of rotation, angular velocity decreases. The way I am unsuccessfully using the key aspects of this principle during my skill is my flip. As I am rotating, most of my mass is close to the axis of rotation, causing the velocity to, to increase. A result in this meant a delay in my mass moving away from the axis of rotation. This can be in, seen in the video where I extend my legs as I am almost positioned perpendicular to the ground. These two factors caused me to over rotate and therefore affected my landing, resulting in me falling over. The joints I'll be focusing on are the hip and shoulder joints. The hip and the shoulder joint are both ball and sockets. The shoulder joint is the most flexible joint in the body and allows for a wide range of movement. Just like the shoulder joint, the hip joint also allows for a wide range of movement. The articulating muscles in the shoulder joint are classified into three groups that act on this joint. Extrinsic, intrinsic and pectoral. Extrinsic muscles can further be divided into the superficial and deep layers. The superficial layer lies on the surface and is made up of two muscles, the trapezius and the latter dorsi. The deep, the deep layer is made up of the levator scapulae, rhomboid major and rhomboid minor. The intrinsic muscle groups are made up of the deltoid and the teres major. Finally, the pectoral muscle group consists of the pectoralis major and minor, as well as the serratus anterior. These muscles allow for flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial rotation, and lateral rotation. Articulating bones in this joint are the clavicle, acromion, glenoid, cavity, scapula, and humerus. There are four main groups of muscles that articulate the hip joint. Anterior group, posterior group, the adductor group, and the abductor group. However, I'll only be analyzing the anterior group and the posterior group as they are important to my skill. The anterior group features muscles that flex the thigh at the joint. This consists of the iliopsonic group of muscles and the quadriceps femoris group. The posterior muscle group is made up of muscles that extend the thigh at the hip. These muscles include the gluteus maximus muscle and the hamstrings group. Articulating bones of this joint are the os coxa and the femur. Another biomechanical principle that I have identified as a weakness is balance and stability during the recovery phase of my skill. However, I need to be looking at the balance side of balance and stability. Balance is an ability to maintain the line of gravity of a body within the base support with minimal postural sway. The key aspects involved in this principle are base support, center of gravity, and line of gravity. The way I am unsuccessfully using key aspects of this principle during my skill are through where the line of gravity is in relation to my body. In the video, my line of gravity is located around the chest, which is too great of a distance away from where most of the mass is located. As a result, this means the center of gravity is also located in this area, and therefore the line of gravity runs through the center of gravity. The final key aspect, which I used unsuccessfully, was base support. In the video, my base support did not cover enough, did not cover a great enough area to support or maintain the line of gravity, which all, was already out of position. The joint I'm focusing on is the ankle joint. The joint is a tight synovial hinge joint. The movements and function of this joint are plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, innerversion, and everversion. Plantar flexion is the movement that describes the pointing of the, to of the foot towards the ground, whereas dorsiflexion is the movement of the foot away from the ground. Inversion is the turning of the sole inward, and eversion is the turning of the sole outward. The articulating muscles of this joint are the anterior tibula, which enables the foot to move out upward, the posterior tibula, which supports the arc, the perineal tibula, which controls the movement on the outside of the ankle, and the extensors, which help the ankle raise the toes to initiate the act of stepping forward. The articulating bones in this joint are the fibula, tibula, talus, 
and the metatarsals. An agonist muscle is a muscle that contracts while another relaxes, and an antagonist muscle is a muscle that opposes the action of another. The anatomical movement which is causing me to unsuccessfully execute this phase is plantar flexion. This movement decreases the area of base support as I am on my toes, which cannot hold a great amount of weight and therefore I am not stable enough to stop any sway. The agonist muscles involved in this movement are gastrocnemius and the solus, and the antagonist muscles are the tibulus anterior. I could improve my performance of my skill anatomically within this principle by landing with a wider stance to give me a larger area of base support and also landing more upright to shift the center of gravity towards more of the where my mass is located, therefore it de decreases the chance of me being unstable when landing.